Right, I've got my coffee, I've got all the products ready, let's talk about the latest re-terminal from Seed Studio. Hey guys, a couple of years ago I covered this. This is a re-terminal, the original re-terminal from uh, Seed Studio. And this is HMI plus CM4. Behind those letters stands Human Machine Interface and Compute Module 4 from, from yours truly, Raspberry Pi. And honestly, that was great. A very robust case for the CM4 module, touch screen displays, couple of buttons, an industrial unit that you can deploy anywhere you want. Later on, it got extended with additional module that brought extra functionalities. And the reason I'm mentioning it because, well, I'm going to pause in here and uh, get another device. You probably remember this because I covered that only a couple of months ago, and this is the shell based e paper display from Seed Studio. And as you can tell right now, this is not the only e paper display that I've got on my table. And the reason being because the Seed Studio decided to merge those two products and create, well, not one, but two e paper based re terminals. So these are here in the right. Now this is E001 and E002, with the only difference being the contrast one. The contrast is because this one has a color display and this one has a um, black and white display. So why did I brought up this? Well, because, because these are very re-terminal alike. So let's talk about them. Both units are almost identical with the exception of display. So black and white display comes with 7.5 inch e-paper display with 800 by 480 resolution. And the color version is slightly smaller. It's 7.3 uh, inch display with the same resolution. And that's virtually the only difference between those two. Just like original re-terminal, they're very rugged. Now the shell for this thing is made from metal and it looks really, really solid in my hand. And it offers extra options so you can take advantage of this device in more than just displaying things. In the box there was a small 3D printed stand that you can use to put your display on the desk and make it into a desk display, but there is also a hanger, meaning you can hang it on the wall and have it there. Now this, as you can see, it's battery powered. There is a 2000 milliamps battery inside that allows this to live without charging for approximately up to three months, with that being dependent on how often you choose to refresh your screen. On the top, we have three buttons, two to switch between pages that's gonna display, but you can rebap them using custom firmware, and one button to refresh the screen manually. On its sides, we've got a support for SD card in case you want to store some graphics to display. There is an on and off switch and USB Type-C for charging and programming. On the other side, we have 8-pin GPIO that you can take advantage of and connect additional hardware. That's going to have support for I2C. Less visible but also present are the buzzer, which is at the top, and a microphone, meaning that you will be able to take advantage of the microphone input and maybe do something with that. That could be quite exciting. Even though I knew they powered by ESP32, S3R8, I decided to open it up and see it for myself because uh, why not? They are cool and I was really, really excited to take a look at what's inside and how they put back together. So while I'm opening one up, I'm just going to mention that it uses 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi and it has Bluetooth 5.0. The ESP inside offers 8 megs of RAM and 32 megs of flash memory to store your programs. 
As you can see, the brains of this is embedded into a single PCB that handles a lot of things. But there are things that I didn't expect. Now, I did expect the temperature and humidity sensor because API documentation allows you to get that information from the device. So this is located right there. But there are a couple of things I didn't know that it's available. For example, the small CR1220 battery holder reveals that there is a RTC real-time clock that you can utilize it and keep it powered on even if the device runs out of charge. So that's very helpful. However, my device came without the battery. So if you're going to rely on that, make sure you're going to check whether your device has a battery or not. I was just about to close the device when I spotted one unpopulated connector. And to be honest, if it wasn't for the PCB's silk screen, I wouldn't know what that is for, but it turns out to be a touch interface. Now, these three terminals come without touch interface, so you can't interact with them with your fingers. However, if you fancy, you'll be able to plug something in and maybe make it work. I had plenty of fun designing this dashboard. However, it took me over a week to just get everything working and figure out how to do it, and then a couple of days to uh, iron out all the bugs, but it was a great project. If you're interested in that, check the video in the corner. Uh, there's a detailed tutorial about that. But uh, Returminal come with the release of SenseCraft HMI, an AI-powered web interface that you can use to design your own dashboards, making it so much simple, because <laughs> the biggest problem with this project was actually getting my interface to, to work and be aligned, and I spent lots of time doing that. But before I'm going to show you around the interface of that, I should mention that if you have all the plans, you can jump into ESP Home that's supported. You can see that uh, those two share the same project from ESP Home right now, and uh, you can use it with that. Or if you don't like programming all that much and you just want to display a single thing or two, uh, you can use terminal uh, firmware. However, the support for that at the moment of the release and when I'm looking at the device right now isn't ready. So you'll have to wait for that. Perhaps by the time you get the device, it's going to be supported. I'm not going to lie, I was quite excited to try a SenseCraft HMI because of a couple of reasons. First of all, not everyone wants to do everything from scratch, and I had to use third-party tools to kind of figure out my uh, way to program ESP, ESP Home dashboard and figure out how everything works, place the elements uh, on the UI using code, and that is not the most pleasant experience. However, SenseCraft HMI helps you with that a lot. First of all, it is split into two interfaces. You can use the interface to flash firmware, including third-party firmware, and you can use the interface to program your dashboard itself and has a bunch of tools to help you. That interface, the dashboard designing tool, it's a basically web interface split into four sections. Picture section. I don't think I have to explain all of that. You will be able to load pictures either to your SD card or to online source and display them on your device, essentially turning it into a picture frame. Simple enough, I guess, and for that, you probably want to use the color display because, hey, it's pictures, right? The second interface is Canvas, but I'm going to skip that and go to RSS feed first. RSS feed is yet another easy interface to explain. It's a RSS feed. If you enter RSS URL, you'll be able to display the headlines without much of a problem. You'll just pull the feed for the website, like for example, Not Enough Tech, and you'll have it available on your device. How cool is that to access the news without even writing a single line of code? The last on the list option is the web, which allows you to do pretty much the same, meaning you can grab any of the URLs, uh, put it in there, upload it to a device, and it will display that website, providing you don't have to use any authentication methods. So if you have a um, dashboard uh, available from Node-RED or for Home Assistant, you don't have to even design all that. All you have to do is just allow um, maybe a kiosk mode for that dashboard and display that URL on your device and you're ready to go. It is really that simple. But let's talk now about the most complicated section, which is Canvas. Canvas is basically, well, it's a canvas where you can place different elements and design your own dashboard. And you can do it old-fashioned way by dragging and dropping elements onto your screen, aligning them all together, and designing the dashboard of your choice. That's fine. But where I was really excited and slightly skeptical was the AI function allowing you to, well, type in the prompt and let the AI try to design the dashboard for you. And since I know how much time I've spent on this, I couldn't get any more excited to actually give it a try and see if it's actually worth your time. So after writing my first prompt of creating a 3D printing dashboard, I waited 20 seconds and the prototype of my dashboard was ready. 
I was impressed because honestly, all of that took about 20 seconds and I had some sort of dashboard to get me started. Yes, it needed work, but it was a good start and I would never get there within 20 seconds. Disappointed because, well, the alignment of the elements was lacking and not everything was enabled to be passed as a variable, something that I would, ha I would have to adjust later. But honestly, nothing would stop me from using another prompt to refine it and align this better, so that's what I did. And I think this is the strongest suit of the AI. Just pitching an idea what you want to see, getting a kind of a template that you can modify and pitch to your liking. And everything would be great and I'll be super happy, except not everything is available in SenseCraft HMI just yet, which is slightly annoying. First of all, some of the elements, they cannot be driven by variables, meaning that if you have the progress bar like I had on mine, which I wanted to scale with the progress, I didn't really have any controls over it after designing it with the AI or after dragging and dropping it into the canvas. Unfortunately, that's not supported just yet. However, I think I found a workaround to that because what you can do, you can grab and export that file and export the file with the data um, element. I'm going to explain that in a second and merge them together in code and re-import it back again. And that should get you started. The second problem is a little bit more annoying because the data element that I've mentioned before allows you to pull data from URL. And that would be great because I would set up my own server, get the information into the device and redistribute it where it wants to be to create um, dynamic shapes or pass the information about the temperature or whatever I want, except it only supports publicly available APIs. This means if you have a home server and you don't have any ports open to the wide world network, it's not going to work for you right now. I've pinged that feedback to Seed Studio and they assured me that it's going to work as intended and you'll have you'll be able to do this from your local server too but but this is annoying right now it kind of killed my project ideas i wanted to create a 3d printing dashboard for my black and white display and a, a second dashboard that will display a random picture event from my CCTV and caption it using ChatGPT. But unfortunately, until this is enabled, I'm kind of stuck because I don't want to make my server available to entire world. So while your experience with SenseGraph HMI might be slightly limited right now, there's nothing stopping you from using other firmwares. Um, first of all, I didn't have a chance to use the terminal firmware because the support for that isn't ready. It's coming up and it's going to work like any regular terminal device, so you'll be able to authorize your terminal device and display the data from like hundreds of plugins that are already written, no coding required. I have a terminal device as well. It works great. I'm quite happy with it. So I'm looking forward to support for that. But what was already working was the support for ESP Home. As you can tell from uh, these two projects or these two dashboards displaying the same information right now. If you want to get started with uh, ASP Home, the process is very well uh, described in uh, Seed Studio Wiki for this project. So do click the, uh, that out. And the only things that I can really tell you like as a tips, don't be like me. I spent about four hours trying to figure out why my ESP Home, after being added to Home Assistant, it's not uh, displaying the data as is the other one. It turns out that if that ever happens to you, uh, um, then just remember to add your new dashboard device to a home assistant as a new device because ESP Home doesn't do that. You can create a new device in ESP Home, but you can you have to still add that device to your home assistant uh, via devices tab, otherwise it won't be authorized to pull the data. So that was the biggest hurdle for me. Uh, and uh, adapting projects from ESP Home to Returminal is as simple as copying, pasting the, the code across and modifying the section responsible for displaying the uh, information, because obviously it's slightly different button, button layouts and uh, slightly different <coughs> orientation of stuff. So do check out the Wiki from Seed Studio to make sure you're doing it right. I think what I'm going to do, since my um, Xiao e-paper display came as a prototype with 3D printed case, I'm just going to port this project permanently to one of my grid terminals and display it through there because it looks absolutely stunning and I love my dashboard. So do let me know, what would you do with a, a black and white version of the re terminal and the color version of re terminal because I am curious about your ideas and how you can utilize them in your either home assistant, home automation, or simply in a different ways. As per pricing, you're expected to pay $69 for the black and white version, slightly more expensive, $99 uh, for the color version. Bear in mind that those are product prices on launch, including small discounts, so be quick and check out my description for the links 
to these devices. As for now guys, thanks so much for watching. I will return to Sensecraft, HMI and Reterminal once those two issue, uh, issues I've mentioned been patched up because I do want to have that 3D printer dashboard and I do want to do something funky with the e-paper display to cover. You've probably seen it on my shorts. So yeah, I hope you look forward to that and I'll see you next video. Big thanks to Seed Studio for sending me these. I'm super excited to see what they will come up next and I'm definitely going to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.